And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower. Today we're taking a look at Gunkimono. Um, this is a game that when I first saw it, the original form of it was called Heartland. Heartland was a game about farming. I saw the cover of it and I was like, ah, old boring Euro game. And then somehow someone convinced me to play it and it was amazing. It was such a fun, intense, evil tile placement game that I just loved. It's hard to find and the cover wasn't doing it any favors. So I was really glad to see it was being reprinted with a new theme and here we have it, uh, Gunkimono War Tales. All right, this is from Renegade Games. It is, there may be the most minor of differences, but it is essentially very much the same game. It is, well, you already know that I like it a lot, so let's take a look at it. The board is gonna be set up a little bit differently depending on how many players are playing. I have it set up for a four player game, but there are pieces for a fifth player game here. So you're gonna have these strongholds are gonna be at a different level depending uh, on the players that are playing. And um, you're also gonna be setting up some banners here. The, there's gonna be the top, a middle, and a lower one on the line. This one's worth 11 to 15 points. It's actually 12, six to 10 and one to five. That's a pretty good pile. It has the two highest of two of them in it. And so there's one of those placed in the line. You'll notice a whole bunch of squares here on the board. Each player is gonna have a handful of three tiles that they'll start the game with that show combinations of the two different, of the different colors out there. Players also have these uh, f five single tiles. Now on your turn, you, the first thing you'll do is you're going to place a tile on the board. When you place a tile on the board, you can place it pretty much anywhere you want. You just can't place blue on top of blue and yellow on top of yellow. I could do the opposite, I suppose. In this case, let's say I put it right here like this. Now I can score that tile. Now when you score a tile, you can, you're going to score both sides of it. And you're going to either score victory points or honor points. Now victory points are pretty easy. Let's say for the yellow, if I score victory points, I would get one, two, three yellow. The, the group of yellow that it's connected to, that's how many victory points you get. If I did it for blue, I would get two. And you can see that as more tiles get placed in the board, later on, if I would add this tile there, you can see that I'm going to get four points or three points here, or both. Now that's one thing you can do, to just take straight points. Points are marked with the marker up here. Another thing you can do is take honor points. When you take honor points, it doesn't really matter what it's next to, you simply are going to take one or two honor points. It shows them on the tiles themselves. So one or two honor points. When you do that, you're going to move the corresponding, so let's say I'm yellow and I take two honor points of blue, I just move this up two on the blue track. Now why are you moving up these tokens on the honor track? Well, for two reasons. One. The first person to get up here is going to take the top tile, which is going to be worth a certain number of points. The second person, the second tile, etc. You don't reveal these tiles until the end of the game. Also, if all of your tokens, let's say yellow manages to get all of their tokens in each column up to where their first stronghold is, then you get to place your stronghold. When you place your stronghold, you can place your stronghold pretty much anywhere you want on the map. So maybe in this case, I would place it right there. You can't place it where another stronghold is. So now this group of yellow is my stronghold. No one else will score points for them except me. Also, at the end of every turn, I score the size of that stronghold. So you can see strongholds are pretty amazing. Here, I'm gonna get three points every turn, but if you have the build up, you might, you know, here now I'm gonna be getting six points every turn and other people are going to want to probably try to stop that. Now, there are some rules when placing tiles. You can place tiles uh, on top of other tiles to make a three-dimensional effect. You can't leave them hanging, although since you have five little one-sided tiles, you are allowed to always place one of them face down and then place something on top of it if you really want to put a tile in a specific spot. You can also, on your turn, instead of placing one of your double-sided tiles, simply play your single tile. It's only gonna score you once, but it might just be what you need, and you might, again, you can score it for honor points or victory points. That's pretty much the whole game. The game is gonna continue till you run out of tiles over here. You'll draw an extra tile. Every time you play a large one, you'll draw a new one. When all the tiles run out, we go to this stack here. In this stack is shuffled a tile. That means it's the last round of the game. So you just start drawing from here. As soon as this tile is drawn, you finish, but everyone gets an equal number of turns. And then you'll reveal any of these tiles taken throughout the game, add them to your current scores, 
and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Now, as the game was originally about farming, I like the samurai theme better, and I like the board, I like the artwork, although I will say it is kind of, you know, at first glance, and maybe when you're playing, it is a very busy board, right? You have all these samurai all over the place, and so it's a, you know, a discord symphony of colors all over the place. Everything else is fine. I like these pieces. I'm not a huge fan of the scoring track. It's a little small for my tastes. Each player has their own token in front of them to show what color you are and once you pass 100 you flip it to the other side to say hey I got 100 so that's that's nice the first player marker being a sword that's pretty awesome I do like that and the tiles themselves are decent tiles they're thick they're easy to tell the honor points and the stuff so other than it just looks a little cluttered I do like how the game is presented I like the artwork again I just look, wish it was a little easier to see everything So why do I like this game so much? Part of it is because the game is clean. By clean, I mean it's just simple and easy to play. You are literally playing a tile, drawing a tile, and then maybe and scoring points along the way. And that is a f just, you know, you can't get easier than that. Now, the strategies and the tactics, and I would say strategies is probably not a good word. Tactics is the best word. As you are sitting there and you are fighting back and forth, at the beginning it's simple. You're like, okay, there's a, I can make a group of three yellow. Hmm, they made a group of three yellow, I'll make a group of four. At the same time, though, as you're making these big groups, you have to be wary because you can take points or you can start pushing your honor points. Honor points is not a bad thing. If you start pushing your honor points at the beginning of the game, you will not get as many points as other players. But if you can get your stronghold on the board early, you can start getting tons and tons and tons of points. At the same time, if you run your honor points up on a few tracks and get those tiles, you can reveal these tiles and get a lot of points. In our last game, uh, two of the players got strongholds fairly early, and they got big strongholds. Now, one player got a stronghold before anyone else, and so everyone else just attacked his thing, just covered it up with tiles so it was a small stronghold. And then, very similar to the second player, but they still got a lot of points along the way, and they were way ahead of everyone else. Another player, though, shot all the way up the tracks and grabbed a whole bunch of the 11 through 15 tiles and 6 through 10 tiles, and at the end of the game, they were like two points behind the leader. It was that close, and I like that this game has that in it. Now, is this game mean? Yes, sir. Meanest game, well, not meanest game I've ever played, but it's certainly a mean one because you are going to be constantly laying tiles in such a way to ruin other people's day. You're like, look at that. You have a big stronghold. I got to cut that down a little bit. I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to surround you. And so the people with the stronghold, and you want to get both on the board, the strongholds are going to try to expand and grow as much as they can but maybe not grow too big or else everyone's going to come after you. At the same time, you get a lot of points, so who cares? Uh, it's Again, I, I can't really talk about the game too long because there's really not that many things going on in it, but it does scale very interestingly. I think three and four is the sweet spot. Five, the board's a little crowded. And it's a little harder for you to, to the, the game's going to be a little bit shorter because you just get fewer tiles over the course of the game. Two, you have a lot more tiles over the course of the game, and it's more of a back and forth situation, but it, it loses, I think, a little bit of the dynamics of playing with three and four. Either way, uh, the game itself takes maybe 45 minutes. feels like a, it's, it's obviously an abstract game. Yes, we see Sam right here in the cover. But there is no samurai or Japanese culture in this game at all. It's literally placing tiles. It could have been the farm game. However, the farm game didn't make sense with the fighting. Here you're having warriors and having groups of people. So that makes a little bit more sense. But again, remember, it is plain abstract. But I like the idea of laying the tiles. I like the angst of sitting there saying, what's the best way to play this? Should I take these six points here? Or maybe take two honor points in green, which moves me up closer to get to that 11 through 15 tile. Or take the 6 through 10 tile, which is at least 6 points, right? But it's going to take me 2 turns to get there. When, How fast do I want to get my stronghold out? If the other people are doing strongholds, maybe I'm just going to score a huge amount of points as the game goes by. It offers those simple, but yet profoundly difficult choices, I think. And overall makes this a game that, honestly, if you play it, you feel like this is a classic game. And it really is. So... This is not a brand new game for 2018. It's a reprint of an older game, but it's a reprint of an older game that needed to be reprinted, I think. It's an excellent game and one I've been looking forward to for years. Definitely check it out. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent!